guys, it's Mia here, and welcome back once again to another bookish video. Now, as you know, because I told you in my vlog video, I was almost done with the book Midnight Sun at a whopping 658 pages. I finally finished this book a few days ago. So, that's what we're going to talk about today. This is going to be the review of Midnight Sun. Now, I'm pretty sure all of you that are readers are familiar with Twilight, but in case you do not know, Twilight is the story of a girl who goes to a new town, well, not a new town, but the town where her father lives, because her mother wanted to go with her stepfather to help him become a baseball player. So they moved, and she ended up moving to the small town of Forks, and this girl's name is Bella. She ends up meeting a handsome, mysterious boy from her school named Edward and quickly starts to realize that there's something supernatural going on here. And that something supernatural is the fact that Edward is a vampire. And instead of being repulsed by this fact, she is drawn to him just as much as he is drawn to her. So they form an unlikely relationship because the two, for whatever reason, feel drawn to each other. Edward because of his bloodlust, for Bella's blood because it smells better to him than any other human's blood, and also the fact that she is the only human he cannot read the mind of. And so they get together, essentially, and we see the story through Bella's perspective and how she handles everything and falls for Edward and all of this stuff. So, this book, Midnight Sun, is the same story just through the eyes of Edward this time. And I've been really excited for this one because I've been hearing so many people talk about it and even though I kind of dislike Twilight, I also really enjoy Twilight. Yeah, it's a love-hate relationship between me and the Twilight series, especially now that I'm older and I've noticed stuff that I did not at all care for, like the immense amount of people falling for people who are certainly underage. But other than that, we're not here to talk about Twilight, we're here to talk about Midnight Sun. Now, Midnight Sun took so long to come out because Unfortunately for Stephanie Meyer, some of her chapters got leaked and this very much upset her because now there were like three or four chapters that had been seen before they were ready to be seen thanks to whoever it was that leaked them. Leaked them. I believe it was someone that worked for her company and or something, something to do with her editor or something, I don't know. But for whatever reason, those chapters got leaked, so she pulled them and uh, started working on her book more and decided to wait to release it because of the whole leakage, which also gave E.L. James, I'm sorry, I completely blinked, E.L. James is the author of Fifty Shades Grey, who, as we all know, started out as a Twilight fanfic writer. So, E.L. James, because of the leakage, decided to write Grey. Once again, falling on the coattails of Stephanie Meyer. So that upset her and things slowed down on making the book, so that's why it took so long to get it. With that history lesson out of the way, let's get to what I actually thought about the book. So Midnight Sun, as I said, is Twilight from Edward's perspective. And <clears throat> Edward starts out really not hating the humans, but looking down on them, feeling above them. I don't know why I'm saying above them, like I'm not human, but you know what I mean. Feeling above humans like us. And so he's very much like, oh, humans are mundane, humans are predictable and breakable, and I could kill them with the twitch of my finger and just it's amazing that they live as long as they do because they're so weak and vulnerable and they have no idea that there's this predator in us living amongst them. 
they have this initial urge to jerk away from us and this initial urge of self-preservation but they shrug it off because their society opted to turn vampires into myth thanks to the Valtori wanting to keep the vampires a secret. So he very much holds himself above us as humans because he is basically our hunter, our carnivore. So he pays no attention to the humans, often using his ability to read minds to answer their questions and get them out of the way. He could care less about humans. That is, however, until one day a beautiful raven-haired girl with brown eyes as deep as the sea walks into the classroom. At first, I kid you not, at first the reason he jerks in his seat is because he wants to kill Bella. And this boy not only thinks he wants to kill Bella, but he plans out multiple different ways on how he's going to do it and how many people he is going to have to kill. It is insane. Like, let me read you something I saved, if I could read it because my brightness is low. It said, I'd kill the girl first. I would only have 15 or 20 seconds with her before the rest of the room reacted. Maybe a little longer if at first they did not realize what I was doing. She would not have time to feel pain or scream. I would not kill her cruelly. I would that much I could give this stranger with this horribly desirable blood. And that's just one thought he had. That was when he decided, if I don't kill Bella first, her blood will be cold by the time I get to her. He went through this whole spiel of, okay, I could go down the right side of the room and snap their, like, two, three heads a, a second, and then they wouldn't see me coming. And then I could get to the left side of the room quickly, hopefully before anybody screamed, or if I have to block the exit, I'll do that. And then he's like, well, what if someone hears? Then how many people am I going to have to kill that are outside the classroom? And it was just insane. He's going about how many different ways he could fill or kill an entire classroom of kids and their teacher or the entire classroom of witnesses that have nothing to do with this in order just to have Bella's blood. So he did not start out falling for her and his reaction was him thinking these things. He thought about all of these different ways he could kill these kids and their teacher in like the amount of time it took her to walk to the front of the class to their seat. And this is the guy Bella falls in love with. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. Sorry, just, just, okay. So then, we come to the whole car crash scene after he desperately tries to leave and avoid her and whatnot. But then, he's like, the only reason he saved her is he was like, if her blood splatters everywhere, it will be 100% over. I will expose my family, expose vampires, and will have to kill everyone here or deal with the consequences from the Valtori, which are the higher up governments. Y'all know who that is if you know Twilight. But that's the only reason he saved her from that car crash is because he didn't want to risk going after her blood and exposing his vampire family. Not because he cared about her. He decided to care about her only because he couldn't risk her getting hurt or risk killing her because he knew that would expose them. He even comes up with a plan later to kill her at her house. That is the reason he first goes to her house, is because he was like, if I kill her at home when no one's around, then there's no risk of exposure. But then, Carlisle, my father, my guardian, is friends with her father, Charlie, and it would hurt him to see Charlie hurt. And then Bella ended up saying his name in her sleep, and he was like, whoa, 
she actually might like me. I'm not going to do this yet because I want to see how this goes. And then he decides from that moment to become not her killer, but her protector. And it is very, 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 very screwed up and just makes me think that Bella is even more of a moron because he flat tells her this. He doesn't deny it. He said, Bella, I'm not good for you. I wanted to kill you and I still want to kill you and I could kill you before you could even blink. He tells her that and she's like, oh, you won't hurt me. You love me too much to do that. If a guy says they're going to kill you, I take that into, I, I take that warning and I'd run. I mean, yeah, he's a vampire, but I'd run. Like, I'd be out of there so fast. But she's like, ooh, my handsome baby, I love you. Like, okay. <sighs> I'm so sick of toxic relationships being romanticized. And we wonder why teens go for girls, will go for relationships that aren't good for them. Anywho, I'm getting ahead of myself with all of that. I just wanted to establish that Edward did not really care for Bella, but that he literally saw her as a snack. So, um, then after Edward decides to become Mr. Protector instead of Killer, um, he gets very, very stuckery and starts thinking, well, what if a meteor comes through a window? Or what if this or this or this or that happens? Like, he wants to protect her from anything he possibly can that would hurt her because he couldn't live without her scent or without her in his life. And when he notices that she reciprocates his love, he falls even deeper into that, saying that vampires feel things more strongly than humans. So once a vampire cares about something, they really care. And unlike us humans, that care does not go away. It stays with them forever. Now aside from all that relationship bullcrap, which gets very boring because Edward is constantly thinking about Bella to the point where it's predictable and over the top. Like this book is the most boringly interesting book that I've ever read and that's because when Edward is thinking of nothing besides Bella the book gets really boring because it's repetitive, it's um it drags on way too long. I mean, this book is literally two Twilights put in one because Twilight was 348 pages and this book is 658. So this is twice as big as the original Twilight. So to say it drags on with the whole Bella, uh, Edward gushing about Bella is not an understatement. I mean, at times the relationship was cute, but then I had like the whole he wanted to kill her and still wants to kill her factor stuck in my head, which makes it a lot less cute. But then, once Edward took a second to not think about Bella, not stalk her in people's heads, and think about something besides her, it is very interesting. Like, we get to hear more about how Jasper was changed and how he was this um, confederate soldier who met with the wrong crowd and got changed and then became this commander of this newborn army and his, his dealing with becoming a vegetarian vampire. And we get to see more about their pow his powers too. It's not the fact that he can manipulate emotions, it's more like he can share his own emotions and feel people's emotions. And we get to see that very much in play and I love how they work with it, especially when he was making himself seem boring to James and Victoria and Laurent. He put this shield of boring protection over them to make him seem less of a threat than he actually was, which Jasper is probably one of the biggest threats in the Cullen clan because of his military training in both the human world and the vampire world. 
he decided to become a vegetarian because his powers over feelings and being able to feel what other people felt, it hurt him to hurt others. So he stopped. And then, with Alice, we get to find out that James was the one to change her and leave her for dead because of the older vampire that showed up to protect her. So, that was really cool, and I loved getting to see the backstory of the other Collins through Edward's perspective. That was interesting. We get to see more of Rosalie's jealousy towards Bella. Not really her jealousy towards Bella. Like, she's not jealous. She's angry that Bella has this choice to be human, but is choosing to be a vampire. Because Rosalie did not have a choice. She was forced into this life, and she very much wanted human things, like to be a mother, to grow old with the one she loved. But now she's stuck forever at 18? Stuck forever at 18 and cannot move forward and can never be a mother. So she's very jealous of Bella because of that fact. So the whole Bella and Edward thing, except for a few parts here and there, was the most boring thing about the book, which certainly sucks because it's supposed to be about them. It's supposed to be about their romance. But with Edward, constantly thinking about Bella and stalking her friend's thoughts and if not that he's wallowing when he's not with her gets very very boring like I know that like first love is all consuming and intense but I don't think that that's all people think about when they have their first love. Like, that's literally all he thinks about. He even ignores his own family and pushes them to the side, worrying about his thoughts of Bella. They all start to get a little fed up with his thoughts about Bella, even though Carlisle and Esme, and Alice, because she sees the future, is happy, they're still a little like, okay, you're a bit obsessed, but we are happy for you to finally find someone that you care about because you've been alone all this time. So that that was the most boring part, except for some occasions where it was cute. Still don't like the fact that he said went from killer to protector because he didn't want to expose his family, but I'm not the author, not my book, can't complain any more than that. So, the whole, there were so many times because of the repetitiveness of Edward's thoughts that I almost said, I'm done with this book, it drags on too much, I'm moving on. But I was like, no, I want to see how Edward handed, handled the final battle with James. Because we didn't get to see that, we got to see him tangling with, Bella tangling with James. So... I very much liked it. It turned into this whole tracker versus tracker, um, car chase, beating the sun to get to Bella as fast as possible, and then coming in and just, and we get to see how Edward actually thought, if Bella doesn't make it, I'm going to go to the Waltori and have them take care of me, which, guys, girls, guys, girls, Please don't. Please don't. Please don't. Your first love is your first love. You're going to have many heartbreaks and many, 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 many failed relationships in your life. Your first love is not a reason to go and want to pull the trigger, if you know what I mean. Just, it's not worth it. You will find other people, even if it feels like your heart's shattered into a thousand pieces. There's other people out there. That just means that they weren't the one. Not yet. So, please don't be doing that. I really hate that the books take so much pull from Romeo and Juliet. With the whole, oh, if my first love leaves me, I must die thing, you know. And the thing that makes me angry about that also is that Shakespeare, in his own words, 
said at the very beginning of Romeo and Juliet, this is not a love story. This is a tragedy. Shakespeare meant that play and that book as satire against the first love intensity. He didn't mean it as a thing about what relationship should, ser should strive to be. And that's what everyone seems to interpret it as nowadays. And that's why stuff like this kind of relationship and being willing to die if your first love dies because people misinterpreted his words. Like, it bugs me to no end when people say, oh, go get him Romeo, or oh, I want a relationship like Romeo and Juliet. No. No, you do not, because Romeo and Juliet knew each other for barely a day and were willing to die for each other. Not just willing, they did die for each other. That's pathetic, stupid, ignorant, and just insane. And it keeps getting romanticized because of that, because his work got so misinterpreted. It was meant to be satire. It was meant to talk against the first love intensity, the first love trope. Yet it keeps getting shown as it's something to want. Like if you were with your first love for 80 years and they died and you're like, okay, I just want to die in my sleep with them. That's different. That's 80 freaking years. Don't be willing to die for your partner after a year. Especially not a first love. Stop romanticizing toxic, stalkery, creepy, tragic pasts. It's not okay. Sorry, that just really bugs me. Let me try to get back on topic. Like I said, he's talking about how he would go and to the Volturi and wish himself dead by their hand if Bella died. But he is able to make it in time, saves Bella, and he's like, when he realizes she's been bitten by James, he completely freezes, he shuts down, he is in so much despair that he cannot move. He can barely hear what's going on. He's just thinking about wanting to rip James to pieces and how this is all his fault and she would never be in this position if she didn't know him and how he, she would be much safer if he were to just disappear, which I agree. Does that make me mean? So, he finally, Carlisle finally gets through to him and says, if you don't want her to be like us, treat it like a snake bite and suck the venom out. And he goes, why does it have to be me? You know I won't be able to stop. I'm going to kill her. And he goes, find the will to stop. Find the strength to stop. So Edward bites down and he goes into a frenzy. He tastes her blood for the first time, which is ten times sweeter to him than it smelled. So he struggles with himself inside. He wants to let this monster inside him just consume her fully. But then he also has this thought in the back of his head that he'll never see her warm again. He'll never feel the softness of her skin against his. He'll never feel her warm breath or the blush in your cheeks and he comes out of it at like the last second and stops and so he tries to convince her after that he her and himself that he is going to leave as soon as she is better that she is better off without him and that they never should have met to begin with because she he is the reason she is so hurt as she is but Bella insists that she stays, and he lies to her, telling her that he will. So, he takes her to prom as like a final goodbye, and that's where the book ends. Now, did I like this book? Yes. I genuinely liked this book. 
even though it was a struggle for me to get through, not just because it was so long, but because a lot of it did drag on. And I mean, this book, the biggest chapter was nearly 50 pages, and that made it feel like I was moving through the book at a snail's pace. Because I'm someone that likes to check my phone between chapters, or get up and stretch between chapters, or um, like go to the bathroom. My chapter stops are my breaks between in reading. So also I like to count the chapters to see how long each chapter is going to take me to read. So when I get a chapter that is 50 pages long, it just feels like the book is moving momentously slow. Like this is a 658 page book and there are 28 chapters. That's a very small amount of chapters for a 648 page book. So there's that too and the fact that the thinking about Bella got repetitive. But like I said, when Edward was not thinking about Bella, the book was very interesting because we got to see not only his perspective but Alice's, Rosalie's, Emmett's, Carlisle's, Esme's, all of Bella's friends. Like we got to see everybody's perspective through Edward because he could read their minds and that was very cool and a good use of his mind reading powers. So I liked this book but I didn't love this book. There was a lot that could have been removed or condensed for sure but I think that Stephanie Myers poured her heart into this book and that she genuinely wanted to give the fans of the original series, like, like myself, a book to hold on to. And I think she did a really great job of it. And I'm not disappointed in having read this book. I'm not. I, I enjoyed it, even though at points it kind of bored me. So that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed. I didn't mean to get so ranty. It just gets me a little heated, if you couldn't tell. And I hope you guys enjoyed. What are your thoughts about Midnight Sun or the rest of the Twilight series? Comment down below to let me know if you want. If not, that's okay too. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye guys!